guys, I think this is the longest episode that we've had. At around an hour and a half, I started thinking, I was like, we might need to split this one up. (laughs) Hi, this is Joe from The Rewinders. I'm not going to waste your time. This is part two of the reboot of the Indiana Jones series with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I had one character that throughout the movie, I just kept feeling, I'm like, this, mm, if this was a different actor, I'd be so much happier. And it was the, uh, the big Russian guy that was all throughout the movie. And you wanted him to be Daniel Craig. No. I wanted him to be Vinnie Jones. God damn it. Now I have to Google someone. He would have been a lot of fun. I, there's no way. I, I don't think he would have been able to pull off uh, a Russian accent, but whatever. It's Vinnie Jones. He would have been awesome. Let's just talk about getting Peter Stormare in there right away. Peter Stormbear? Stormare. Oh, that guy. I don't yeah. Google. Who is this guy? I don't know who this guy is either. I this do know. Guy. Oh, I see. George Carlin. No, not George Carlin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know who Vinnie Jones is now, at least. He's a funny guy. He's in a lot of things. Yes. Oh, I just realized we totally skipped over my first my first complaint. I knew who Vinnie Jones was the second you said his name without even Googling, but I just Googled to make sure, and I'm glad I knew who he was. <laughs> at least I can remember faces to celebrity names. <laughs> Dan, we still have time for your next complaint. Yes, Dan. Uh, Kate Blanchett's terrible accent? Russian accent, and the fact that her that... Re- her normal speech pattern sl- uh, slips out a lot. So often. I actually made notes about that. Yeah. I wasn't sure I was going to say anything about it, but good lord. Yeah. <sighs> Accents are hard. I it's... know. I try to do it mm-hmm. in D&D every now and again. It's just so sad because... The whole time I'm just wishing it was Nazis again. And I know it can't be Nazis, but damn, I miss the Nazis. It totally could have been Nazis. No, it couldn't have. Steven's got a clause now. Because ever since he did... <laughs> he, no, he legitimately had said this. Ever since he did um, Schindler's List, he can't do another movie with Nazis. Because it, was, uh, it would what? undermine the, the terror that the Nazis pre- represented in Schindler's List. Oof. So he refuses to do Nazis as an enemy in another Indiana Jones movie because... Yeah, really Fair sucks. Point. Okay, I see, <laughs> but I get I see point. the moral, so we I see the we need there. to fire him from the movie then. Yeah, yeah, just have George Lucas direct the whole next one and see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, can, can we? Can, no, 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 no. Oh. I'll I'll tell you exactly what will happen then. Indiana Jones will walk somewhere. He will stop, and when he stops, he will talk. And if he doesn't talk, he will sit. And if he doesn't sit, he will talk. Or he'll sit and talk, but then he'll get up and walk and then stop. I like where this talk. is going. I, I think we also need to uh, have him have a conversation about how he just hates sand. We are talking Be out in the about desert and start complaining about the it. most drawn out, the most terrible chase scene. Yeah, um, I don't know. So, so we're we're in the we're in the meat and potatoes of the film now. I mean, uh, I think we've we've come and gone from the meat and potatoes. Oh no, we we are still in the meat and potatoes because so much shit happens in this portion of the film. Yeah, I mean we're talking about monkeys swinging on vines, eh. the shitty sword fighting. We're talking about the saw blades bouncing around. How about those ants, huh? It took so long. <laughs> it took me out of the movie. I lost care about the whole thing so quickly. And that's the beauty of the early Indiana Jones movies is they knew when to cut it off. It really was. They knew when to they knew when to cut the chase scenes off and just call it done. Yes, it was brief. It had a payoff. Well, the chase scenes had a goal too, and that's the problem. You look at you look at Raiders of the Lost Ark and Indy's trying to get the ark back, but he's also trying to stop the Nazis. That's the point of that chase. He goes from thing to thing to thing, gets to the vehicle that has the Ark, and then he uses that vehicle, once he's actually done fighting everybody trying to steal it from him, to disable uh, the Nazi's head vehicle and basically stop the pursuit while getting away. It had an end goal in sight. This did not. It's just a bunch of random vehicles driving through the jungle trying to look cool, 
And then all of a sudden just gunshots and shit start going off and crazy, crazy action. Got to keep ramping it up. Then you have a sword fight between the two. Oh, man, that's awesome. Oh, then there's going to be a rocket launcher and there's going to be blades spinning around. Oh, what if what if one of the characters falls off and then has to start swinging on vines because they see monkeys doing it? How about we just nuke the fridge? <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 we forgot, <laughs> we forgot to have the... Uh extreme gross out moment we need to throw that in here too yeah so that's that's the end that it races to that was never in sight just all of a sudden boom boom car car anthill that's not entirely the end though, it's it's not entirely we the still end. have to jump off three waterfalls yes and we're getting just to punctuate we're getting to how that. much <laughs> how much extra bullshit there exactly is. they can't just exactly. fall off one waterfall and call it good they have to fall off every waterfall in the goddamn exactly earth. and that's like the cherry on the shit sunday we're getting to that but before we get there there's a there's a detour at fire ants that's the body gore i was talking about it's the body gore and and they make it a point to make it so gross that they have to make it squirt into the camera three times there's three instances yeah, where they do that camera shot where it's like, oh, they crushed it and the bug juice is on the lens. Isn't that, that icky? Giant grape-sized ant. <laughs> Between your and I don't know if you guys felt the same wow. way about this. World War Z ants. I don't know if you guys felt the same way about this, but I, I was so angry and excited at the same point writing this down <laughs> because <laughs> talking about rehashing indie, this ant scene is also this movie's goddamn propeller scene. <laughs> yep. You get that skull. You get two guys duking it out with ants all around them. <laughs> Who's gonna fall into the propeller? But there wasn't an actual propeller. It was ants. No, the ants, ants were the propeller. They still got themselves destroyed. It was still two guys on the brink of falling into something that's obviously going to kill them, having a having a fisticuffs. But instead of falling into a propeller, it's falling into ants and being carried away. <sighs> and then. To put the cream on the cake, the hat gets carried away by the yes! ants, but they're like, oh, nope, never mind. We're, we're done with this hat. We'll just leave this here. And that hat means so much to Indiana Jones that he takes the skull away from Oxley, the skull that's protecting yep. them, and walks over to grab his hat, leaving Oxley p- potentially to be eaten by ants. He deserved it. No, you're supposed to just believe that one big Russian's enough to feed the colony. <laughs> I mean, it was a big Russian. It was. Joe, how how did you feel going into the scene? Because we had all seen it before, but just, I gotta know. I gotta know. Oh, well, you guys had mentioned ants before uh, on our last recording, so I was like, oh, this is the mm-hmm. ant thing. I was confused by the gopher mound at the beginning of the movie, because I was like, oh, is it the ants already? <laughs> <laughs> but then I was like, oh yeah, digital gophers, forgot about those. And uh, when this came up, I was already, I hate this, I was so just drawn out and losing track of things because we just had, what, 20 minutes of a car chase and knife fight and punching and then knife fight turning into kung fu and then swinging on vines. <laughs> it's just, y- you are... Like right. we need a change. So Kate Blanchett much. karate chopped Mutt for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Forgot all about open hand, that. edge of the edge of the hand karate chop to the neck several and, times. And the ants Ooh. actually formed a ladder, and she had to squish it with her thighs. Knees. Yes, yes, yes. The World War Z of ants. Yes, that's what you meant. I caught that now. <laughs> Anyways, Joe, sorry to cut you off. This scene is so aggravating. <laughs> The scene is the reason why I can't get into the movie. Still there, Joe? Oh, no. The ants carried Joe away. I think away. we lost you again, Joe. Joe. Oh, I saw he just muted himself for a second. No, I'm here. Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Oh. He couldn't hear anything that you were saying. I wasn't saying anything because I got cut off. Ooh. I'm sorry, Joe. No, I'm no. So I No, literally, I was shutting down my browser and turning it back up again my connection's bad uh, today oh so you got cut off by the internet yes okay gotcha gotcha oh I, I jumped in at a good time then so that scene joe huh pretty pretty good huh pretty impressive i i was starting to miss things at that point because i my attention was hard to keep it's it's like the second the jungle chase starts off it's just 
you get to the point where it's Indy with the rocket launcher and then the team splits up into multiple vehicles and it just starts dragging to the point where you can't even focus on what's happened. Mm. I forgot that she even did the karate shit and everything until Ken just said it. Yeah. I forgot about it until I saw it this morning and I was like, what the? God I watched, damn it. I watched it last night and I already forgot. That scene is just so overdrawn. Basically, as soon as they are past the downtime in the Amazon and it's they jump in their vehicles, everything is it's too much, too fast. Not I don't care about anything because of the huge elaborate historical temples that are giant machines because aliens help build them blah 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 yup i mean when you think back to things like let's say last crusade it was just a small place that was more of an optical illusion the only real threat was obviously choosing the wrong goblet and being too cocky and then having just a couple of blades protect the place and there is some mysticism involved sure and then you look back at Raiders of the Lost Ark. It was just a place that was lost in time, buried in the sand, covered in snakes. And yeah, there's some mysticism involved with opening it and not opening it as well. And a couple of puzzles you had to figure out, yeah. which draws out the movie in an interesting exactly. way. Exactly. And Temple of Doom, no real explanation outside magic rocks, but, you know, still fun. It's fine. This is just, it's giant ass sets. I mean, those cogs you keep referring to, Ken, those things were, I mean, I, what what would the diameter of those things even be? Where did they come from? Who made cogs that large? Aliens. I, I guess. Aliens decided to industrial revolutionize it up and make some giant ass cogs as part of their wacky... But uh, also mostly, what's the point of those? To seal up the exits when people are almost certainly going to be dead why did you need my thought process it was some kind of lifting <laughs> mechanism to bring the the ship up from its landing landing space and that makes sense but i highly doubt aliens would have made any of this and the and, and the natives definitely wouldn't have made anything along those lines because they haven't progressed to the point of having that technology but the aliens gave them the ability to make that technology if the aliens are flying around in a saucer if the aliens are flying around a freaking saucer through through dimensions and shit why the hell would they settle on cogs because it was the it was the stuff that they had to work with maybe i don't know i'm just i'm way overthinking this but it just feels like they just basically chose a random time frame in human history and said here's a thing george lucas is like hey you know what i like i like fallout let's uh let's put a <laughs> let's make this into a vault i also see it as you know they open up that temple and there's that big hole and oh we have to run down because the stairs will pull away and we'll never be able to get down otherwise because we don't have ropes we don't have ladders. We don't have pulleys. We don't have baskets. There's no way to get to a bottom of a pit. Ugh. Yep. It seems really rash to rush to the bottom of a pit when you don't have a way out. Yeah, and on top of it, people had been in there before, and they left stuff. Well, how did they get out? They left stuff. Oh, they died. Well, there was no... No, no, you're talking about the people that fell to <laughs> their died. death. There had to be more people <laughs> who, like, okay, now we need to bring in all these sphinx type things we need to bring in these babylonian oh, sure, things sure. and yeah. leave them here outside of the spacecraft to honor the aliens our gods i mean that was interesting because the uh poem they had to or the literature i guess they followed uh, the oxley quotes they had said was from uh, milton i believe and like when you're there watching the movie you're like why the hell is milton making a map for finding some Mayan treasure. That could be because that's the only way that Oxley can, like, handle communication because his brain's all screwed up. Yeah, he's his his brain's addled. I guess that would kind of make sense. He's doing the old uh, Bumblebee, especially since Shy is in this movie. <laughs> Oxley is Shy is Bumblebee. Aww. Aww. That's adorable. Uh, this movie, guys. Ken, uh... Why don't you get to your favorite part here with the three drops? Oh, the the waterfall? We, I already got angry about yeah, that. Yeah, but I'm, we took a detour I to actually, the ants, and now it's the waterfall drops. I, uh, that's coming. I don't want to miss that. Gone. Oh, no, I don't. I didn't want to miss it. That's, that's so well done. It's so well done. <laughs> I'm in my uh, exhaustion phase after be, after raging. <laughs> I um <laughs> when we first talked about doing this movie oh god when we first talked about this movie and the fact that we'd be watching it again one scene above all else still stuck out as a sore thumb even though I had only seen it twice since 
since watching it again last night. One scene stuck out like a sore thumb that's always ingrained in my memory. And that's the first image that pops in my head when I think of this movie is Miriam sitting on the beach clutching the steering wheel like a cartoon in a daze because they had just gone over three waterfalls. Oh yeah. And that scene still just pisses me off so much. Out of everything in this movie that doesn't work, I don't know why, but that is like the poster that pops in my head for this film. Her just sitting there with a grin on her face in a daze holding a steering wheel broken. Well, what's more amazing to me is they all three, all four jump jump out of the car on their way down from that last waterfall. Mm-hmm. You can see them, exp- they're, they're jumping from the car. They're not being thrown. Yep. They are forcing themselves out of the car. So her being at the bottom of the waterfall, sitting there with a steering wheel in her hand. Doesn't make any sense. On, on dry ground. <laughs> Considering the the duck boat also uh, landed how, how upside down. How did she down. get there? How did she get the water, the steering wheel? I mean, I get it. It's kind of fun. It's kind of like, oh, hey, look, she's got PTSD. Ha ha ha. But uh, <laughs> but um, in order to get from jumping, literally jumping out of the car, apparently with a steering wheel in her hand, swimming to the uh, to the shore so she doesn't drown. Uh, propping her up into the uh, on, onto a rock and then bringing the steering wheel in front of her so she can do this uh, this uh, somatic uh, uh, what do you call it whatever event <sighs> yeah it, it's 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 a weird thing to get to it is and I'm just trying to find a comparison with the original trilogy that feels the same in terms of tone there and isn't I'm, I think the goofiest thing I can think of from the original trilogy is obviously the raft scene flying out of the airplane out of Temple of Doom but even and that I don't think anyone that doesn't even went out of that and, and, and no not just the, the level of ludicrousy of, of the survival odds I mean that's the one that a lot of people always go back to and it's like oh that was, physics don't work and they die i get it yeah it's it's true they did it on mythbusters it's fine yeah it, and it's it's more <laughs> believable than this was clearly for a laundry list of reasons and they definitely uh prepped you with uh early warning given her psychic powers to blow up a transformer <laughs> just be like bracing guys we're, we're gonna take this a little bit different than you're used to yeah it's at that point i knew i should have turned off the movie but i was in a theater and i couldn't <laughs> and actually when i first watched this movie i i did not i walked out of the theater being fine i was with the movie. so there angry. were some things like that chase scene even after watching that movie that first time that chase scene was still the uh god damn it just do something with this movie already yep yeah like i said it was the silence when i walked out but so we're getting to the end here joe obviously you know how it ends yeah you saw what happens. How do you feel about chocolate and your peanut butter? How do you feel about a UFO and a grumpy alien forcing a girl into a dimension and shit? I don't even know. <laughs> Weirdly enough, we already made a uh, Call of Duty reference earlier. <laughs> um, this is kind of like the Black Ops and the uh, <laughs> Modern Warfare games. <laughs> You have the desert movies and the jungle movies. Yeah. Uh, the desert movies being the good, believable, oh, hey, look, there's this weird thing going on. And the jungle movies being like, what the fuck just happened? I, I had a note I had a note from last night when I watched this that I was going to apologize to all of you and say I take back my comments about wanting more jungle movies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything because I'm just like, does he not remember the jungle scene from... King of the Crystal Skull. Yep, I he completely wants, forgot. I forgot that. that. I, I don't. I erased I, that uh, twenty minutes from my head. <laughs> so at the end of the first Indiana Jones film, Indiana Jones grows. He learns that there's something to the mysticism of religion. At the end of the second movie, which actually happened apparently before the first movie, Indiana yes. Jones learns <laughs> that not everything belongs in a museum. At the end of the third movie, he learns uh, to live with his father again, to mend that bridge, to to know what it is to be more than just uh, an adventurer. It's also to be a son, and you know, and to be a f- with his family. And to be something else as well. At the end of this movie, there's an alien spaceship. And everyone just shrugs and goes, Uh, yup, there it goes. Bye. The most you can say is he learns that he can feel guilty for running off on Mutt. (laughs) 
And marry him, I guess. But he makes it good him. because he marries her now to make up for it. Blah, blah, blah. No, there's no growth. I'm just getting at that. He he does not have personal growth at the end of this movie. That's what I was saying earlier about how nothing that they use as an excuse to dust this film off to have Indy ride off into one more adventure after tying it up does anything to push his character forward or push the franchise forward in any notable way other than money, like you said. And it's not even a, a reboot of the series in terms of what Star Wars did. Star Wars just said, we're doing exactly the same thing, but with different people and slightly different Empire, slightly different Rebels. But we're going to do the exact same thing. And that was fine. But that's they were very forward about it, wiping that slate clean and doing the exact same stuff. This is not even showing any sort of look, we're going to do the same thing we've always done kind of mentality. It's, we're getting into sci-fi now. I don't know. It it, yeah. it doesn't really, it references the prior stuff a little bit, but it doesn't hold any of it with any meaning of how to go forward. They, they start off making a lot of good references to other things that happened in the movies prior. And then it gets unhinged. Yeah. Someone comes into his, his classroom, like everyone does, to start, hey, this is the new thing we're going to have you chase kind of moment. Yeah. And the new thing he uh, does is actually end class early without a bell. It doesn't happen <laughs> to be the end of the class. He's just like, eh, fuck you guys. You guys can learn your own stuff. I'm going to go talk to this guy. He seems to be... Uh, he seems to need well, to talk I mean, to me. He quick. is the dean, or was the dean. He's the dean at the end of the movie. Which now seems like an appropriate time to talk about this. Um, so we're at the end of the film. What in the actual hell happened to the FBI subplot? Nothing. Nothing. It started and then it was gone. Yep. <laughs> and now in it now Henry Jones Jr. is the associate dean. So he's not going to yes. be teaching classes anymore. And somehow yes. being the associate dean will give him the flexibility to go on adventures again? Or are we saying he's <laughs> done? Because we uh, don't his know. His next adventure is oh, child oh. rearing? Wait a no, minute. no, 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 no. Uh, it, it very clearly says that he's going to have a next adventure when he... Oh, yeah, uh, he grabs his hat. Yeah, he deprives Mutt from taking that hat. Yeah. Which, when I left the theater, that actually made me really happy. That, that scene made <laughs> yeah, me, me feel too. so good. Because, as I had said before, I was so upset that they were going to make absolutely not. And then the wind started blowing and the hat blew off the, the coat rack? Why the fuck? Oh, oh, the wind didn't just start blowing, Dan. The wind conveniently blew open double doors on a church. Blew a hat <laughs> off as they apparently were finishing up the wedding. Just in time for them to walk out those double doors. Like a nice little nod to Indy saying, somebody who's watching for you, guy, here you go, open the doors for you, here's your hat. I, uh, here's some more luck for you. That scene encapsulates that character's luck, damn it. Like, that is, <laughs> out of four movies, I think that's the most inexplicable bout of luck that he has ever had in the entire franchise summed up beautifully in just that stupid exchange and then mutt almost puts the hat on and then india gr grabs the hat i'm like yay it's not gonna happen yeah we, we we everybody was leaving the theater feeling pretty bad after everything that they had witnessed but the one thing that was consensual between everybody was that they were happy mutt didn't take the reins <sighs> it'll be fine if he would it would be fine yeah I don't know if there are any other monkeys that out there with the same hairstyle that would be able to help him out again. Jeez. So after going over it like we have, is this a good reboot? No, absolutely not. Of the original series? No, not in any way. It didn't do anything to progress the series. Like I said, Raiders was great. Temple of Doom was a misstep. Last Crusade was freaking incredible because they took everything they'd learned and made a beautiful ending to the series. And then they just dusted it off and brought this out. So the even-numbered movies all suck. So that means that the next movie that they're going to make is going to be good. Good luck with no! that. No! No! So that's that's going to be the confusing thing here. And this is, this is where it's getting so muddy. Originally, when they talked about the next movie, they actually talked about doing a full-on reboot. There were rumors swirling around that Chris Pratt was going to be the next. No. Indiana Jones. 
And then that got kind of shuffled under the rug. His first Jurassic, Jurassic World. Yeah, Jurassic World. Yeah. And they're just like, are, that scene got leaked, and people are just like, are they making an Indiana Jones movie? Because it had a very Indiana Jones feel with the way that the scene had gotten leaked. Oh. I guess, sure. yeah, sure. We've already done Aliens. Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Dinosaurs, sure. Mm, why not? We already had Aliens. It's, it's the next way to go. <laughs> Just think of it. The next one where they have the militarized dinosaurs in it. Oh, God. Indy meets Turok. <laughs> <sighs> so Harrison Ford has obviously said, yes, we're doing another one. They've expressed interest. There is reports back in 2016 that the next indie film would be out in 2019. Obviously, that came and went and didn't happen. It's in development hell right now, Yay. but I don't know. We don't need it. Joe, do you feel like this movie held up? It holds up like any other mediocre movie does from the past 20 years. It doesn't do anything other than hold place in the theater for a money funnel. Money funnel. The money funnel. Our pockets to their pockets. Eh. It's... Eh. Well... It's a good way to distribute wealth. Here is the latest news, and I'm sure you guys are going to be so thrilled. First off, 2022 is the next expected release date in July of 2022. Okay. It's Indy 5. They don't really have a name on it yet. Too fast, too easy. Too fast. (laughs) Hooray! Steven Spielberg has stepped down from directing. We'll get Nazis again! And is being replaced by James Mangold. Who? Okay. He did Ford vs. Ferrari. Okay. Which was a good movie. Oh, I've heard things about that movie. And he also did Logan. Oh. That's good. Oh. So Indy dies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's one way to start oh. over. Uh, yeah. He's going to get shot by Nazis, isn't Is this going to make an R-rated indie movie and just take it to hell right and back forth? Just, oh, I'm so excited. I'm in. God and if it's it, the I'm same in. vibe as Logan, I mean... Indy's going to be an alcoholic. Marion will have left him, and he's just going out into the woods to, like, kill one more Nazi before he's done. (laughs) And then he's, like, gets to strangle that last Nazi to death and then sits there and he's like, (gasps) at least I strangled (laughs) one last Nazi. And then we get, like, his life again flashing through his eyes and then time fast forwards because he's in the middle of nowhere and his body decays and rejoins the earth and his hat stays there the whole time though and then it comes to (laughs) 2020 and people are flying the nazi flag again and a young man finds the hat and you hear the music do 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 no, it should fade. It should fade into a warble, and then the hat just gets crushed and thrown into a pile. Yeah. I'm very much excited, <laughs> looking forward to the uh, low-energy piano cover of the... Uh, minor <laughs> key cover of the Indiana Jones Oh, God, theme. the stupid piano. Yeah. Yep. We'll get a trailer where it'll just be the piano, and it'll just be a hat on the ground covered in dust and a hand picking it up. A bloody and hand. A date. Yep, a bloody hand, and then a whip sound and a date. <laughs> That's all. Uh, so yeah yeah it's uh 2022 not not spielberg but he's staying on as producer obviously lucas is retired so hopefully aliens will stay out of this one the interesting thing is david cope left or coop left he was the original screenwriter yep. he's had a lot of things he's done obviously i guess they brought in jonathan kazdan who is the son of the raiders lost ark scribe all right so interesting i guess We'll see how this goes. Huh. We'll have to. Yep. And Indy is obviously still going to be Harrison Ford. We're still around in two years. Well, he's not going to crash his plane into EAA this year, so. Nope. But parks are still not safe 100%. All right. Didn't he crash? No, it was a golf course he crashed yeah, he... into. That was right. Golf course. See, that yes. was an emergency landing. He didn't crash. Right. Uh, well, when you botch a landing... It's a fancy way to say he crashed. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> One last question for you guys. Where is the lowest point of this movie? We got the refrigerator. We got the monkeys. We got the ants. I'll tell you where. It's hard for me. Oh, go ahead, Joe. It's on the second waterfall where Indiana Jones and no one el- and everyone else in that automobile 
just looks straight ahead like nothing's happening. And he goes, there's one more. There's, there's another one. And they just go over it like it's nothing. Yes. Because they don't care anymore. And nothing matters. They're not going to die. Yes. And, and nobody else in the car understands, oh, there's three drops. You're like, yeah, okay, you got a waterfall. Oh, shit, he knows what he's talking about because he was here before. Maybe we should, you know, like, no one in the car understands that except for Indy. Always got to be the smartest Mutt one of the bunch. did grab, grasp that Ox was trying to tell them to get out of the river. Yes. Yeah. Yep, okay. I wasn't even going to put that one on the low point, but that was that was where you could definitely feel it. Yeah. I would say it's probably the low, that's the low point of the movie. I that's, agree. Definitely where you feel the most despair. It's the movie telling you, whatever, there's another waterfall, who cares? Let's just yeah, go so, Let's just go over it. There's another waterfall. You guys convinced me, because it's really hard not to say the fridge for me, because just having that right in the beginning of the film really sets the stage for what to expect. I mean, it really tapers expectations and really expects you to just throw everything out the window and expect that you're, you're watching a movie. <laughs> it's... The movie started on so many tapered expe- expectations. Like, even the motorcycle chase through the school was just... Bad. D- dull. Yeah. It was dull to It was me. very dull. And it, it never really gets a chance. It never gives itself a chance to curtail your expectations into something positive. Yep. And I, I agree with you guys. That changes my mind thinking about the waterfall scene because this movie for me it's always been about two things it's always been about the fridge and the waterfall everything else is awful that i brought up and it is obviously stuff that's in the foreground of why this movie doesn't work but for those two scenes specifically those are what comprise my memories of this film when it comes to the waterfall you're right that second waterfall they're all just clamoring back into the boat lazily tired they just don't give a shit there's another drop (laughs) <laughs> it's almost like the movie's it's it's like the movie in a way is warning us like don't get your hopes up for a good ending here come aliens here comes a ufo there'll be more <laughs> stuff but you're not gonna give a shit you know those yeah. guys the uh, so they got the uh the uh, the mayans shoved in walls behind things like how long were they in there i have no idea but they're behind some very intricate displays and they don't make human noises they make weird noises uh, so find it so hard to believe that the aliens came here and taught them how to farm but didn't give them language anyway sorry that was uh had to get that one out well they specifically said they only gave them farming irrigation and like one other thing and none of them were was any sort of speech therapy yeah oh they did make a reference to the fact that the skulls granted humans psycho telepathy supposedly so maybe maybe the aliens just use the humans as slaves and just as a hive mind forced hundreds of thousands of people to build the temple on top of their pyramid to keep it safe or on top of their uh ship to keep it safe well that's an interesting take i mean maybe they did actually make that reference to the egyptian pyramids as well so kind of adding to the mystery that aliens built the pyramids well also i mean they're saying that that one antechamber with all the artifacts in it had artifacts from all across the world well then the people there would have never gotten there so obviously the aliens couldn't convince the humans that they were gods at first the the people were like nah and they're like fine 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 how about this we'll go over to the other side of the planet and bring you something. Here, look, here's a mini Sphinx. Are you impressed, people? And they're like, not yet. Here's some Babylonian garbage. Are you impressed now? Maybe a little more. Why don't we get a ride? And then it's like, ugh, if we let you inside, then you're going to get your feet on everything. We just had it reupholstered. Gaudy gold. It's good. No. You stay out of the... Get out of the UFO! God damn it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, I guess, would you guys agree or disagree that the cross of Coronado would have greatly improved the film? <laughs> Nothing could improve this film. It's just it's just as lost as Temple was. Here's the thing. When, at the end, all the water starts flooding back into the basin, and it kind of just gets kicked up and lands at their feet, and he goes, Oh, yeah. Forgot about this. And then everyone would have been angry about that because they're like, oh, just checking a box to say, hey, remember this? Oh, no. Um, no. 
Or that the Cross of Coronado was a hilt to a sword that was the only sword that could kill the alien that they had just released that was going to now terrorize all the Earth because it was so pissed at humans for stealing its skull for so long. Ah! No, uh, I'm, I'm going to send you guys. I'm going to send you guys a little gif because I, I can't believe none of you have mentioned this. Give me one sec here because I'm, I'm just numb. Talking, no, talking no, I'm this. trying I'm to so crawl. Did. Did you guys see this in the opening scene? Because I'm surprised none of you brought this up. I didn't bring it up because it didn't matter. Well, I'm bringing it up because you just said nods to the other things. Yeah. Please show it to me. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, because it was inconsequential. they just had to. Inconsequential. Yeah. I mean, they sure. They legitimately had to. Yep. I figured well, they, they would did, since they, they were there. They did in Last Crusade. <laughs> There's a there's a oh, painting that. of it in the temple yeah, under there is. under the library. When she asks, "Are you sure?" and he's like, "Yeah, pretty sure." But honestly, like this is when they're when you start off the movie, you got some Russians looking for something. We see this warehouse we haven't seen since the end of the first movie. You're supposed to believe that you're here for that's, the art. I mean, they they lay it on pretty heavy that that's what they are going after was the ark. But then, mm-hmm. they but then they obviously don't do jump off. They do, they, well, they, they do jump the on like, oh, there's a crash. We're looking for a body. You know this. It's mummified, blah, blah, blah. And it's highly magnetic. And or actually, I don't know if they got the magnetic part. I would have been more impressed if they were after like the the spear that punctured Christ's side that has been used in other yes. movies. As, that would have made way more Indiana Jones sense. It would, it would have, have gave... It could have possibly been the item for the next two movies, so you have yes. your second trilogy. That's, but that's no. what we were talking about, I think, in Temple of Doom, Joe. And, and maybe it was more so uh, Crusade, but I know we talked about it at least twice now. Some of those side stories would have made so much better of a film than what we got. There was one where he was after the staff of Moses, too. I mean, that would have been freaking incredible as well. There's, there's so many better options, and I get it. I already complained about it being too christianity relic heavy but at the same point this is worse it's better, it, it's better than aliens <laughs> I, guess. Uh, I don't know like i said this movie feels like fan fiction yeah fan fiction is a really good way of describing this it's like what if and just some kids sitting down and and not even good sexy fan fiction either nope uh, so anyway yeah well That was the reboot of the Indiana Jones series. Its name was Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. (sighs) Rewound and rebooted. We did it. Unfortunately unfortunately not eaten by the VCR. (laughs) I when the VCRs died. 2008, right then? Yeah. Or by ants, I suppose. If you could like, comment, subscribe, all those things help the algorithms that put the podcast audio version up there or the youtube videos out there and you could share these episodes with your friends your families your russian neighbors and help us spread the word so we haven't discussed this yet I should have remembered that we needed to uh, decide this before recording, but we were so eager beavers. Come back in two weeks when we rewind and reboot. What? Oh, are we are we deciding on the fly what movie we're going to do next? I kind of just thought... assumed we would do Alien because that was what we had been yeah, chit-chatting alien. about. Yes. Yes. Was it Alien, alien or we were going to do... Um... Beastmaster. Alien. Oh, Alien. We haven't had a chance Alien. to look the other one yet. Alien. Okay. So come back in two weeks when we rewind and reboot Alien. Oh, God, that felt weird. It's because you didn't start the, in- the, come the episode, back Joe. In two weeks when we... Oh, my God, I need to rewrite this. Next time, we'll... Next time, we will be covering the movie Alien. So come back in two weeks when we rewind and reboot Again! Holy shit. That just kept going on like this damn movie. Well, that sounded like the scene at the end where the shit's spiraling around, the aliens forming together, and... 
<laughs> that was very impressive. I'm not going to lie. 